Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex over at Monroe Laser Engraving, and today I'm going to show you how you can get a beautiful black mark, exactly like this one that I'm showing you now, on any piece of stainless steel that will not rust over time. It's great for cutlery, and we're gonna go ahead and jump right in right now. So here's our setup and you might be thinking this looks a little bit ridiculous and that's because it is. But when we Z mark steel, we are already starting out of focus and we're gonna talk about that more in a minute. Uh, and it is very important that we are level because we are already starting from a point where we are not in focus with the metal we're trying to engrave. So if we get down here, you can see, we're only gonna be engraving this little bit of area right here. So this slant up is less important, but it's more this front to back. Uh, if you are even just a little bit out of focus and, and not level with the laser head, uh, you're gonna run into problems. So you just wanna start from a nice focused uh, starting point here. And a little jig like this with cardboard chips goes a long way to make sure that that happens. All right, guys, this is going to be really quick and dirty. We don't have to do a lot of setup here. All we are going to do is hop over to EasyCAD. We've got our 110 lens in today, so we're going to go ahead and open this up. And with EasyCAD open, um, we're just going to uncheck Use Default, and we're going to select a parameter from Library. And scroll all the way down here to the ZMark Black Plus 3. And uh, that is the setting that we're gonna be using for this job. So all we need to do is grab a quick logo and I've got a great one right here. I'm gonna show you right now. So we're gonna go to import and we're gonna select our file right here and hit shift C to just center that up. I don't know why it comes in on the, uh, the outskirts over here, but um, shift C will just pull that right to the center and we'll ungroup and we'll grab what we want to grab. For this demo, we're just going to do this simple uh, 1914 here. Uh, so we're going to group that, hatch it, hit OK, Shift C to center. Uh, we can take a look at our hatch settings here really quick. All right, there we go. So we can see our hatch settings now, and uh, we're doing two hatches opposing 45. So hatch one is 45 degrees, hatch two is negative 45 degrees. Uh, we're using this straight across hatch pattern with the red diagonals and our line distance. And this is my line distance for 99% of the jobs that I do, uh, 0 0.0254 millimeters. Uh, it's just, it works. So um, that's what I recommend. And we'll just recap our settings here. I'm at a speed of 50.8 millimeters uh, per second, uh, power of 35. Remember, this is on my 35 or my 30 watt machine, excuse me. So 35 power on my 30 watt machine. If you have a different wattage machine, uh, go ahead and check out my video, um, which I'll put in a card here uh, about converting power settings between different wattage machines and a frequency of 25. That means if you don't have a uh, fancy machine uh, that does 400 kilohertz, like a JPT or a Mopa, uh, you can still do this mark. Uh, it's a really great trick that can save you a ton of um, effort and oiling and issues with customers on, on rusting marks, especially for like cutlery and kitchen use. Um, so in my haste, I forgot that I had this set to 60 and uh, I had continuous checked from the last demo that we did. So uh, definitely make sure that continuous is not checked and 60, we wanna set back to one so that it only runs this part one time before marking it. So again, we're over here on the machine. It's nice and level, but there is a trick to this. And that trick is this guy right here. Uh, for our Z mark, we need to be three millimeters defocused compared to where we usually are. I've taken a cardboard chip and wrapped enough blue painter's tape around it to make it exactly three millimeters thick. And then I've used it here as a spacer to space my normal focal stick an extra three millimeters away. Uh, if I wanted to not be lazy, I would cut a second focal stick three millimeters longer than this one, but here we are, I'm using this today. So um, I place this down, 
and then I focus to the top of our chip instead and that will give us the perfect focus. And with that set up, we are all set to mark. So let's go ahead and check that out now. When this is running appropriately, there won't be any sparks and there will barely be any sound. It's very quiet. Take a listen. If your mark doesn't look and sound like this, you are not focused correctly. And while it's three millimeters out of focus for me, it might be uh, more or less for you. So I definitely recommend testing this with a sample piece of metal first. Uh, usually one pass with the opposing 45s is enough. Uh, like I showed you earlier, I accidentally had continuous marked, so it's run this multiple times. It's not going to hurt anything, but it's really unnecessary. So uh, one pass should cut it for most steels. Some steels will require a second pass, and you'll know whether or not it worked because you will either have or not have uh, that delicious black mark. Uh, that's just unreal and this is never going to rust we're not messing with the integrity of the metal here um, you can give it a quick wipe off if you want to but it's not really necessary and uh, that that guys is is really that's what we're after right there look at that incredible really really good I hope you found this uh, video useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, uh, hit that like button, and please subscribe because I'm going to be making a lot more content like this. Uh, if you really love the video, check out the Patreon. It's linked in the description below. Um, the tiers are really cheap. Uh, it's 4 and $8 a month right now, and it will help me continue to make videos like this for you guys in the future uh, to give you more tips and tricks. And finally, uh, if you want to help out the channel, consider checking out some of the affiliate links in, in the description below. Uh, one of them will get you started with Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop uh, through Adobe, and they're uh, really the, the best programs to set up um, any kind of uh, graphics for your laser machines. I, I highly recommend them. Uh, the other one is Two Brilliance Laser Inks, which allows you to use this bad boy right over here, the CO2 laser, to uh, mark really big pieces of metal. So while the fiber is excellent for being able to mark smaller bits of metal, if you need to do a big sheet, Brilliance Laser Inks is the best way to do that. You spray it on, you hit it with the CO2, and you wash it away. Uh, and wherever the laser hit that, uh, that chemical, it's going to bond and give you a permanent black mark, which uh, looks pretty good. It's not as good as the Z mark that we're doing today on the fiber, um, but it's the best that you can hope to get with the CO2 on large pieces of metal, and uh, customers love it. So definitely check out both of those links. Uh, leave me a comment below and let me know what kind of videos you want to see in the future. Uh, but that's all I got. So I will see you guys in the next episode. Thanks so much for watching. Later.